This program is about the search for elusive creatures. Whenever possible, the actual subjects have participated in recreating the events. What you are about to see is not a news broadcast. Lofa, Oklahoma, nestled deep in the Arbuckle Mountains. It's a community of peace, quiet, and a hotbed for sightings of a creature that can only be described as the Bigfoot. Two brothers, Bert and Randy Hayes, claim Bigfoot attacked them while they were out camping and have vowed to hunt down the beast and bring him to justice. Randy May and Austin Sawyer, meanwhile, maintain Bigfoot is a peaceful, loving creature and describe their own unique encounter. In all, there have been more than 30 sightings of a tall, humanoid creature around Lofa within the last month alone. It's left residents scared and confused, with many of them wondering. And at the center of it all, is me, Wayne Nicholson, professional cryptozoologist. I've hunted down everything from the Loch Ness Monster to the Jersey Devil. But now I'm here, in Lofa, to find the mother of all unproven creatures. We don't even go outside the city limits anymore. I mean, see, he, he doesn't even like me talking about it. I mean, where's the proof? There ain't no bones, ain't no droppings, nobody's been hurt. I mean, and you think we'd have a better picture by now, for God's sakes. I mean, people are freaking out about nothing. I wish someone would step up and do something about it so that we could go back to our lives. Will you be that person? You have my word. Journey into darkness with me, where the line between science and speculation ceases to exist. Where what a man knows what a man fears are one and the same. We're not gonna stop until we get the truth by listening only to the most credible witnesses and getting the most ironclad testimony. We can prove once and for all that the impossible can be real and it deserves to be taken seriously. We done had ourselves a menage a trois with Bigfoot. That's fancy talk for a three-way, like a sexual three-way. Hey, uh, man, you, you doing all right? I know they're crazy, but you do still have to do the interview. Yep, yep, just, uh, yep, I needed a minute. I'm um, all good. Let's do this. Let's do it. So, um, why don't you just tell us your story from the beginning? All right. So, about a couple, three weeks back, we were sitting on the back porch smoking us a little cigarettes. bit. Cigarettes. Clove cigarettes. Cigarettes. He definitely wasn't smoking no meth. Anyways, them cigarettes started to kick in. And that's when we heard it. The most ungodly howl, like nothing I've never heard before. Ow! That's when I look over and I see him. So I stand up and I say, you hear my wife, Bigfoot? Okay, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. You see Bigfoot in your backyard and then your first thought is, this guy's here to have sex with my wife? Brother, you don't understand. We can't step off the damn porch without everybody and their mama trying to get a piece of old Brandy May soil. Everyone's real respectful when I turn him down. Although, we can't get through one karaoke night at the Outback Steakhouse without somebody trying to buy me a blooming onion. Agreed. I even started wearing a second wedding ring, but it ain't made no difference. Jimmy, we've talked about this. I get this is your movie, but I do the interviews. Okay, whatever, man. Barker's ass hillbilly shit. <clears throat> Sorry, let's continue. Right, so I tell Bigfoot, I say, hey, go get your own missus but he just standing there in the shadows all spooky-like. So that's when I chime in, and I'm all like, you can't have my body, Mr. Bigfoot, but you can't have a hit of my cigarette. And that's when he walked out into the light, and we laid eyes on him for the very first time. 
the Bigfoot himself. How would you describe him? Big, Big and hairy. hairy. Lean but strong. How wide? Six foot, give or take a few inches. Our size, I suppose. And what happened next after he uh, showed himself to you? The most magical night of our marriage. We discussed art, culture, and literature. We shared our regrets from the past, our fears of the present, and our hopes for the future. Eventually, I started to tell Austin and Bigfoot about these articles I'd been reading. How monogamy is a made-up construct, a way to enforce heteronormative patriarchal gender roles, and that marriage itself was originally created as a way to consolidate wealth and power through in-laws, and that having multiple sexual partners while remaining in a committed emotional relationship with one person was not only a valid way to live one's life, but it was becoming more mainstream every day. It made sense to Bigfoot right away. Now, Austin took a little more convincing, but he eventually came around. I just figured my brainy may, she knows her worth, and not a single person on this God-given planet Earth is good enough for her, except me. But a mythological creature of legend and lore? Hell, I was honored to be in the same room. So I take it that's when you... It was unlike anything I'd ever experienced. The unhinged, unadulterated, undomesticated passion. I don't know where I began and Bigfoot ended, or how Austin fit into things at all. We lost all sense of ourselves as individuals and became a single, sweaty, writhing mass of passion, flesh and fur. Hear <sighs> the moment. Sex, drugs, and Sasquatch. A remarkable tale, but is it true? Brandy May and Austin's story proved difficult to corroborate. We were unable to find any distinct footprints in the backyard, or any usable hair samples from inside the house. But there was one other option. Okay, um, so you all are positive that the dog has never set foot in here. Yep. This is a one room in a whole house. Old Tromboner knows to stay out of. This is mommy and daddy's private space. Sure. Oh. Uh, do you need me to step out so you can... <laughs> Trust me. This ain't the first time we've had a camera pointed at our bed. After several minutes of diligent investigation, I finally found what I was looking for. Got you now, you son of a bitch. It was the first of what I knew would be many proud moments to come. We said farewell to the Sawyers. Brandy May, just give me a chance. Brandy May, right next to the Sawyers. and sent the hair samples we recovered to the lab. They told us to expect results in two days. We have our first trace of physical evidence, yet I'm chasing certainties like fallen leaves in the wind. <clears throat> our case means nothing without an actual on-camera sighting. Luckily, We've been contacted by two local wildlife experts for their own Bigfoot story to tell. Now I'm supposed to be looking at the... Am I looking at the camera or am I looking at him? No, you're, you're looking at him. He's the guy you're talking to. I can't look at him and the camera at the same time. You don't have to look at the camera. Camera's already looking at you. But if the camera's looking at me and, he, and he's looking... Who's looking at the camera? Nobody has to look at the camera. How are you gonna see me? You, know, you won't know who I'm talking to if I'm looking at him. We'll hear it. We'll hear his voice. All right, man, Let's get on with it, it's your show.
And it was a normal day. We got out to the campgrounds. It was just me and my brother, Bert. Yep. About four in the afternoon, we get there. I set up the tent. Bert chops the firewood. And we both just spend the rest of the day fishing. We're in the tent. It's about one o'clock in the morning. And we're sound asleep, all right? We hear a bunch of rocks, like raining over the tent, like someone's throwing them at us. Well, I go out there to check it out. Bert's scared. <laughs> I get outside and it's all quiet, of course. And then I hear <laughs> a, like a twig snapping. So I turn around. I'm like, damn. It's, it's the sick. big foot. No, I said, it's a deer, a beautiful thing. God's masterpiece, a 12 point buck. Hell, that's the kind of we try, we go out there to see anyway. Well, it's all quiet again. I hear some leaves kind of rustling in the back there. I turn around, big ol' eyes, man. This mother hairy as Yeah. I'm like, raccoon. Yes, yeah, this damn raccoon. You used to have a pet raccoon, didn't you? Marmalade? No, I, yeah, I used to have a pet raccoon. Yeah, he ran off, though. Anyway, it's all quiet again. I'm looking out. I hear this kind of trees rustling in the wind, dreamy like. And I turn around, boom. Let me guess, it's a cockeyed squirrel. No, I man, it's, it's Bigfoot. That's that's why we're here in the first place. And then it, it, that's the reason we're dipsh. Anyway, he's eight foot tall. He's about 353 pounds. What I didn't know was gonna happen that night is I, I felt Bigfoot's aura, like a magical aura. Magical aura. Yeah, man, like he was looking into your soul. So you look into his soul, but he looks back into you and he's, He's learning things about you that you don't know about yourself. He's learning things about Bert that I didn't know about Bert. Yep. He let me go that night. And, you know, I can't rightly say why. You know, I got some theories, of course. For instance, there are 10 or less professional people who have high security clearance, and they have knowledge about Bigfoot. They have knowledge about Bigfoot, and Bigfoot has knowledge about them. They might be in groups. Bigfoot's trying to start an army. They're trying to start an army. They might be trying to start an army of Bigfoots. I don't know. I'm not sure. There's a lot of moving parts. To, to be honest, I haven't really thought it through that much. But either way, it's subverting American values. And that's why Bert and I, my brother, we decided to start the direct union to make Bigfoot absent swiftly and suddenly. It's a task force. A trademark's pending at the moment. Okay, so but what's the purpose, though, of the task force? Is educate, educate people, and protect the Constitution, shit like that. So it's like an awareness campaign. Yeah, but I, I, that ain't the only thing we're gonna do. I mean, we're also gonna go out there and whip his ass. We're gonna go out there like hunters, kill the motherfuckers, shoot them, shoot them dead. Okay, but how? Um, I mean, if if you've got this big creature out there and he's got all these magical powers, like, how do you intend to just kick Bigfoot's ass? <laughs> well, shit, firepower, man. We got we got guns. Pew pew. We got knives. Shwing, shwing. We got dynamite. Boom boom. Well, even with that expansive arsenal, do you think it's enough? It ain't the only weapon, friendo. You know what I'm saying? We got it right here. Secret weapon. Whoa 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 whoa! Point it right at him. Hey. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Birch. He trusts me more than he trusts his ex-wives. Gail and Henrietta. Yeah. They're good women. That's why I married him too. This here, my grandpa Thaddeus wrote this scrapbook, all right? My grandpa Thaddeus has more run into the Bigfoot than anyone you're likely to meet. Well, he's got this scrapbook right here. It's got all kinds of facts. And hey, is there, survival guide. Uh, is there any way we could take this off your hands just for a little bit? I mean, this would be invaluable to our investigation. Oh, would it be invaluable to your investigation? That's a good idea. Let's just give it to him, huh? Our damn family heirloom. Hell no, man, you're not gonna get this shit, But there are some some steps you can take. There's some, some facts. There's three of them, to be honest. It's, it's kind of like a rules. One. One is you'll know you're in the presence of Bigfoot when you see his devil nets. Devil nets, what's that? Devil nets are, they're sticks and uh, well, the bones of his enemies and he just, he decorates the trees with them and it's almost like a, like a dream weaver. He, 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 that's how he gets inside your dreams, that's how he gets inside your head. It acts as, as kind of a satellite. Two. Corn nuts. Corn nuts. Yeah, corn nuts. Bigfoot loves corn nuts. So you can just sprinkle a little trail like Reese's Pieces. He's likely to follow them. What's number three? And then uh, number three is... What's... Hell, I... I think that's just... I think it's just the two. 
Yep. Dude, we've been at this for one day. We've already done two interviews, and already I'm telling you there's something very weird going on here. Certainly was not as fruitful as I hoped. N no, like, what about the discrepancies? You know, the, so we, <clears throat> we've interviewed two people. One pair of people said that the Bigfoot was six foot tall and friendly and loved to do drugs and have sex with them. And then the other guys, those Michigan militia guys, said that the Bigfoot was eight feet tall, did not try to have sex with them, but did eat all of their salty snacks. Look, we're at the beginning of this project. I don't know what to tell you. Like, we're just getting started. We're gonna run into a lot of dead ends along the way. What are you thinking for dinner? Like, tacos? Or... What the hell is your deal, man? You put up an ad on Craigslist, you look for a filmmaker to follow you around on your magical Bigfoot journey, and then you hit the jackpot, we get You to... were literally the first person to respond. Well, lucky for you, I'm between studio gigs, and I'm visiting my parents for a couple of months to sort of take care of them. Uh, but I wasn't but... even sure that the ad had posted. Like, I hit submit, and boom, you respond. Okay, and yet, I've still spent a whole day filming with you, and I still don't know what the hell any of this is. Uh, the, the only thing I do know is that none of it feels real. It all feels like bullshit, and I'm so tired of bullshit. I can't make a perfect movie out of bullshit. The only thing you can do with bullshit is make more bullshit. There's already enough bullshit in people's lives. I don't need to contribute more bullshit to this bullshit world by taking your bullshit, turning it into my own beautifully shot, perfectly edited bullshit. You want real? You want something real? I'll yeah. give you something real. Turn that thing on. Ah, yes, turning it on. This thing? This creature, for generations, has only existed in our waking dreams and our collective imagination. But I wanna show that if you have enough determination, enough grit, enough drive, you can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that what some people say is impossible can be real. Like flesh and blood, like you and me. All you have to do is look hard enough. I want anyone who watches this to feel like they're 10 years old again, with all the wonder and the terror that comes along with that magical age. None of us are gonna live forever, but if we do this right, if we pull this off, we can create something that transcends time and space, that inspires young and old. I want future generations to see the best that humanity has to offer. Hey, Jimmy. Uh, this is a reminder for yourself to actually go back and buy all the stock footage you've been using. Just look at how beautiful the sunset is. Oh, you can't, because there's a giant watermark in the middle of the screen. Anyway, just buy the footage and make Wayne pay for it. Hello. My name is Jimmy. Thank you so much for watching my film here at the Cannes Film Festival. If you're like me, and you're fluent in the language of cinema, uh, as I am, then you'll have noticed by now that something seems a little off about Wayne. As a director, it's my job to uncover the truth. But with Wayne, all I'm getting is lies. Not only do I believe that Wayne is hiding something, but I also believe that I've seen him somewhere before. Um, so in order to get to the bottom of that, I am going to make a documentary within Wayne's documentary, documenting who Wayne is and whatever uh, the hell he's up to. No more lies, America. When I was 14, I stole my grandmother's Oldsmobile to drive to the video store to get the unrated director's cut of Triple X State of the Union. It's a great movie. Um, but I must have gotten it into my head that the D on the gear shift stood for drive backwards because I, I crashed that big, beautiful car into my grandma's living room. 
and destroyed her washing machine. When she asked about it, I blamed my cousin Bobby. And Bobby got sent to military school. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. I'm going to figure this out. I'm gonna figure out who Wayne is. I'm gonna make the perfect movie and it's gonna be my first step toward becoming the next uh, Todd Phillips or, or, or Steven Spielberg or failing that like a, like a James Cameron or the genius who does those Geico commercials. The next morning, we were contacted by a local sheriff's deputy who alleged to have video evidence of Bigfoot. She agreed to speak with us on the condition that she remain anonymous. She then added conditions that we use her real name and allow her to appear on camera. Thanks for taking the time to, to meet with us today, uh, Deputy Sharon. It's my... <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, uh, okay, so usually we would uh, begin the interview with our subjects by getting the subject's name. So I, uh, what's, uh, is uh, Sharon your first name or your, your last name? Yes. It happened just last night, four hours into a 12 hour shift. You know the kind. I just turned east off of 76 onto County Road 2117. Noise complaints on a bonfire party. Teenagers, booze, finger banging, you know the kind. Oh shit. am I allowed to say finger banging or are you gonna put this on HBO? Oh, don't worry about it. I'll cut all this out. I'm like the king of iMovie. Anyway, you were responding to the call about the bonfire party. Correct. Protect and serve. You know, that's the job. Anyhow, I was coming around this bend when suddenly I look out my window and to my surprise, I see this old beat up recliner. Not so old and beat up that it can't be used, mind you. And I tell you what, not even two weeks earlier, Aunt Tammy was telling me that they was looking for a new recliner on account of my Uncle Junior setting their last one on fire because he was practicing the Roman candle juggling in the house again. I immediately established a perimeter. And while I knew I was neglecting my sworn duty to uphold the law by not breaking up that teenage finger bang orgy fire, I also knew I could square a crisp $20 bill from Aunt Tammy if this recliner was in tip top. Upon examining the bottom of the recliner, I observed a nest of rats, which startled me, but then I discovered they were already dead, thereby ascertaining no need to discharge my firearm at that juncture. Unfortunately, I was too busy performing my due diligence on the mobility of the reclinable seating unit that I didn't notice him. So you're saying that this footage has not been fabricated or altered in any way, is that correct? I wouldn't know how to make this up if I tried. And you say this happened yesterday evening around 11.45 p.m.? Yeah, I, uh, well, no. I said it was last night, but I never specified the time. 69% of all Bigfoot activity occurs between 11.45 p.m and 1 a.m. That's sort of midnight, the witching hour. The footprints we've unearthed at this location are at least 18 inches long, far surpassing the size of an average human foot. And they lead into a region of the woods as vast as it is, unravaged by the destructive forces of man. Who knows what unseen wonders we'll uncover when we enter Actually, that most folks like to set up meth labs out here, especially in the woods. DEA raided a few of them a month or two back. Generator blew up, started a brush fire about 20 square miles wide, the likes of which I've never seen before. They caught three out of 10 of them some bitches. So tax dollars get put to work out here. Well, set the cars. Uh, this here's my cousin's. 
<laughs> the point is, we now have video evidence, a set of prints, and we can now set our sights on following the Bigfoot's trail and exploring these woods. Our hunt began. No, the hunt will not begin. Did you not see what happened with Wayne and Deputy Karen? He knew the exact time of the Bigfoot sighting before she said anything. Around 11.45 p.m. I never specified the time. The only logical explanation I can come up with is that Wayne Nicholson is collaborating with the Bigfoot to blow up the city and use the insurance money that he gets from blowing up the city to manufacture heroin. I'm not gonna let this stand. I'm not gonna let Wayne get away with it. I'm not gonna let the Bigfoot get away with it. I'm gonna keep making my documentary and I'm gonna keep amassing evidence and then I'm gonna confront Wayne with the evidence because no more lies. Last year, when I was crashing at my friend Keegan's house on his couch, I accidentally ate a whole bag of marijuana Sour Patch Kids because I thought that they were normal non-marijuana Sour Patch Kids. And at some point in the ensuing five hours, I purchased three spicy Popeye's chicken sandwiches and fed them one after another to Keegan's iguana. And it died. Keegan asked me what happened afterwards and uh, I told him it was an act of God. But we both know God would never act like that. I'm gonna stop this son of a bitch. I'm not gonna let him drag me to the woods and feed me to the Bigfoot so that my cinematic genius can be out of the way and they can keep blowing up the city to make heroin and selling the heroin to little kids. You got bunions. Do you like bunions? No, they make my tummy hurt. All right, more for me. Whoa, no, whoa, whoa. What is that? It's like a little action camera. No, it's for experimental shots. Nope, that guy. No. That's the only one. I no. Don't, that's for the cheap stuff. Peter Jackson used this for The Hobbit. Like, we can use this. The Hobbit? Is the one with the laser swords? No, it's, it's not the one with the laser swords. There's a glowing sword in it that's called Sting, but it's not, it's not the same. Different. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Two men going out into the woods in search of the Bigfoot. Got anything insightful to say before we go in? <clears throat> yeah. Take this. A map? No, hey, don't you need that to navigate? No, Jimmy. The rest of the world, I need a map to navigate. Oh, that's so good. Okay, I'm cutting all of this out so that I can use that in my screenplay. It's about a guy uh, who's a screenwriter who's writing a screenplay, and his screenplay is about a screenwriter who's like sick of playing my I stand on the razor's edge of the unknown, embracing eternity and the dark mystery of the woods that surround me, in the same way that everyone except for me embraces comfort and conformity. Stuff on the sword about how cool the sword is. This forest is afraid of me. I've seen its true face. The laughter of naysayers echoes through my consciousness like a knife in the dark. But the pain of those reminiscences only pushes me to venture further, to work harder. The trail ends here. Uh, are you sure? I haven't seen any Bigfoot tracks for like hours. Pause. Man, your eyes aren't even open. This is where we camp. This is where we make fire. We need paper to ignite the kindling. Go now, child, and find us paper. I'll stay here and commune with the forest spirits that they may give me guidance. More like commune with the forest spirits to murder my sweet ass. 
going to use these. That's art. Let's see. Okay. Ooh. Let's see how in tune with nature you really are. You know, I met an Egyptian exorcist once. Told me a really long story about doing battle with the devil. Did he win? No. Why is that thing still running? We're done for today, right? Uh, yeah, you know, like, so uh, the, we got the campfire going and I figure like, when the campfire's going, that's when the, the stoic male protagonist finally softens up and maybe reveals some of his backstory or like his motives or something, just in case. Well, you like the way that the flames kind of dance. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's hypnotic. But no, we're probably not going to do that. I don't have anything to share. Well, sometimes the truck won't start. <clears throat> so you grease the wheels. No, hey, no, 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 hey, you don't understand. You don't understand. Man, I, I don't even know what you're talking about, man. This is not just a documentary. Okay, this this, this is about more than fame and fortune. What? Tell me, dude. You gotta spill it. What's it about? This is about, this is about, this is about hope. And this is about redemption. Uh, those are just words, man. That's bullshit. Words is bullshit. That's what I always say. And also, the thing I say always about bullshit is that it's bad. You gotta dig deeper, my friend. Nope. That's what it's all about. Maybe, well, okay, what about this? Is it something like to do with, for example, the manufacture and distribution of illegal substances? Heroin, perhaps? No. No, <clears throat> this is about my son. This is about my son. And make a movie for my son. And I prove to my son that they're like, that you don't have to be like everybody else is. You don't have to do things their way. You can still, there's magic. There's still magic and you, there's the magic can be real. Magic can be real. Damn, dude. Yo, whoa, hey, yo, I got one. I got one. Here, uh, take the camera. Take the camera. You gotta get, get on. Boom, we're gonna do this all day. Yeah, get a hand on it. Oh. Okay, Jimmy. Why are you here? Well, Wayne. My father was the manager of a truck stop Arby's. And my mother repaired trucks. Monster trucks, but still, we don't get to follow our dreams in my family. It's not, there was never an option. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jimmy. I got, <laughs> it was never an option. <laughs> I got it, I got it. It was never an <laughs> Okay, Bogey, let's get you to bed. <laughs> Ugh.
hey folks, Jimmy time. Got a quick update for you. I don't think, I think that maybe I jumped the gun when I was saying that Wayne was gonna blow up the town and use it to make heroin. I mean, the guy's just trying to inspire his kid, you know? You have to be some kind of monster not to let that touch you. Ugh. Ugh. <coughs> oh, God damn it! Right in my shoe, shit! I'm gonna have to clean that up tomorrow. Ah, oh, man, this sucks so bad. I hate this. Update over. Good morning, Vietnam. Wayne, hey Wayne, where are you? Did you hear me? <laughs> What's up? Did you hear me? I was quoting Steve Carell from The Office. Yeah, yeah, I, I heard you. I heard you. Yeah. Good. Anyway, let's uh, get a hurry on breakfast, huh? I got like six things of bacon and no cooler, so we're going to have to be pretty quick. Uh... Wait. Uh, isn't this where you hung all our food? Yeah. And that's yeah. the rope you used? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wayne, did you eat all our food? No, I did not eat all our food. Okay. I, uh, okay, so I got up this morning and it was gone. What? What do you mean gone? Uh, gone. Like gone, gone. Like somebody came in the night and took it. Took all of our food. So what, like one of the meth dealers? Listen, we're gonna get through this, Jimmy, all right? This yeah. is not that big of a deal. Oh, okay. I'm, I mean, I might have a granola bar at the bottom of my backpack. It's probably been there like six months, but, uh, uh we're over fucked, man. This is so, this is so fucked. Listen, no, no. We got We got to head back to the car. We got to go out, get some Funyuns, some fresh granola bars, and come back tomorrow, and we can try again. No, 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 no. Listen, no. Jimmy, please, don't go. We can't afford that. If we leave now, we're going to lose two full days. Listen, man, I can feel it. We are so close. We are so close. Just stick with me. Hang with me, okay? Uh, I don't know about this. Just trust me. Can you trust me? Why are you wearing one shoe? So, Wayne said that I have to spend today getting B-roll of the forest, so you get to look at that. Ooh. Oh. Oh, hey, there's something. Who gives a shit? I don't know, man. I'm in the woods. We, we don't have any food. We don't have a plan. I'm hungry. I'm tired and I want to go home. Um, but I know that if Wayne's right, and if we do see a damn Bigfoot, this will all have been worth it. So I just got to hold on to that, you know? Hey, folks. So you remember how I said that if, if, if Wayne was right and we did find evidence of the Bigfoot, that this whole cockamamie sh might be worth it? Check this out. Oh my God, can you believe it? Wayne was right. The real actual Bigfoot is in our campsite right now, just walking around doing Bigfoot shit. Oh, he's checking out the campfire. Careful Bigfoot, it's hot. Oh no, oh buddy. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, he's checking out my backpack. Well, that's all right. He's not gonna figure out how to open it. Okay, no, he's got a tool in there showing evidence of tool use. That's an intelligent Bigfoot. He's got, that's my MacBook. That's my MacBook. That's my Mac. Hey, whoa, hey, whoa, dude, no. That is my damn laptop, man. Get your hands off my laptop, you Sasquatch. That's right, go back to your cave and stay there, you That's where you belong if you still don't know not to touch a man's laptop. A magical experience. I can't believe that I'm the guy that got the first indisputable footage of Bigfoot, man. That's, I owe Wayne a huge apology. Hey folks. So, remember when I said that I couldn't believe that I got the first indisputable footage of Bigfoot and that I owe Wayne a huge apology? So, 
he told me not to bring this guy, um, but I figured that as soon as our food went missing, I should probably set it up as kind of a security thing, just for just for safety. Um, and uh, well, all right, I'm just going to edit in the footage, and you can you can see. All right, all right. Look, that's my Mac! Hey, whoa, hey, whoa, dude, no! That is my damn laptop, man! I'm gonna be real honest, this one hurts a lot. It's really burned a hole in my, uh, my heart. It's like I'm 13 again, finding out Santa's not real, you know? I know I have to confront Wayne about this. I know that I do, I, I know I can't not, but I also know that I need to keep my emotions in check. I gotta be calm about it. I have to be collected. I've gotta be non-judgmental or else I'm no better than he is. What the f is G wrong Jimmy, with you? Jimmy, please just put the you camera down, down and let's talk about this. You dress up as Bigfoot and then you go through my shit and your grubby ass like Bigfoot people. hands? Enough! Please, can we just talk about this like human beings? I need you to say it on camera, Wayne. I need you to admit that you're creating a hoax. What about you? Who runs after a fucking monster to protect a laptop? A MacBook isn't just a laptop, okay? It's an investment in my future. But that doesn't matter now because you were just another stupid liar making up shit about Bigfoot. I mean, Jesus, Wayne, if you're gonna dress up as Bigfoot in the forest, at least have a little fun with it. Like, there's a guy on the internet who plays the saxophone, goes by sax squat. Yes. Yes. I bought a gorilla costume online and I've been running around making appearances so that I could get sighted and then interview people about the sighting. So like the Redneck Brothers? No. Nope, those guys are just idiots. But it was me on the dash cam footage of Deputy Sharon's car. Uh-huh. And also I was with Brandy Mayanoff. That was you! And this way, Mr. Bigfoot, is where all the magic happens. Ta-da! Oh my. Austin? Is it just me, or did Bigfoot somehow get more handsome? F*** me. He did. It's been a real weird year. Yeah, dude, 2020 was a weird year for all of us, but all of us didn't start f***ing each other in Bigfoot costumes. Listen, I can explain everything. I just don't want to do it on camera. Can you give me that? Fine. Well, camera's uh, off. Let's have it, huh? What the f***? I don't even know where to begin. Okay, let's begin here. Are you really a crypto... Dentist. Cryptozoologist. And no. I'm a plumber from Durant. Then what? Then why do this? That part was true. I'm doing this for my son. That. That means nothing to me. That doesn't explain anything. I'm getting there. It was career day at my kid's school, and uh, I was already uncomfortable. I'm already not good with that, you know? Getting them in front of a bunch of fourth graders and shit, staying coveralls. And then the lineup is crazy. It's like a doctors and lawyers, and I think there was a state senator there. 
I don't, you know, I'm a plumber. But Charlie didn't care. To him, I was still the coolest guy in the room. But when I got up to give my presentation, the whole day just took a, took a dark turn. <clears throat> so uh, once you apply the glue, you have about 20 seconds uh, to put the fittings uh, together um, or else it'll be, uh, yeah. Um, How much do you touch poop? Some. Not a lot. I mean, it's not a big part of the, um, yes. Do you put your hands on the poop? Sometimes you have to, uh, like, uh, like a septic tank will back up or a sewer and you, uh, the leak and you have to, to sometimes, it's not really the job though, like I do a lot more, um, diff, uh, it's a lot of office, yeah. Do you have to go to school to be a doctor of poop? No, I, I, it's not, I'm not a doctor. I was, I, I apprenticed for several years uh, as a journeyman technician, which is interesting, um, because you just start, you don't start the uh, job. You're a doctor of poop. <laughs> <laughs> doctor of poop. Doctor of poop. Doctor of poop. Please don't call me. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> I totally see it now. Uh, I knew I recognized you from somewhere. I thought that was off. <laughs> you were all over the internet last year, dude. Trust me, I know. Like for real, I could not go anywhere online without seeing a fart dad meme, man. It took over everything. Yeah, it took over my whole life too, but nobody seemed to care about that. And like the memes were one thing, but it really took off when they did the fart dad challenge is the latest social media trend sweeping the nation. Participants record videos of themselves, passing gas in the faces of others and urging their peers to do the same. It's all in an effort to raise awareness for irritable bowel syndrome. The Fart Dad Challenge and the meme that inspired it have been the focus of much publicity in recent months, including a brand new CBS sitcom, Fart Dad Comes Home, starring Kevin James and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. We're excited. It's airing right here on KWETV beginning this fall. Dude, Fart Dad was the subject of my final capstone at film school. What do you mean, like a, like a documentary? Yes, something like that. The whole world was laughing and and my whole world just shattered. Amy left and she took our dog. Charlie won't even look me in the eye. I never said that out loud before. He's just, you know, he, he's really into monsters and he's really into aliens and Bigfoot especially. And he's at that age where you, where you can still believe in stuff, where you can still, where you can still believe something's out there and it's not cynical or, or ironic. I just wanted to make this movie because I wanted to prove to him 
you know, that this thing that he loves is, is real. Maybe, maybe he could be proud of his dad again. But it'd be a lie. Man, everything you've been doing here, it's all fake. It's a hoax. It's, it's bullshit. I just want my son to look me in the eye again. You know, maybe you gotta be a parent to understand. Uh, buddy, I'm not sure anyone would understand this. <clears throat> uh, how do we even turn this damn thing on? Oh, I did something. Hello. Uh, so I got up this morning and uh, Jimmy was gone and all of Jimmy's things were gone, um, except for his sleeping bag uh, and this toy camera. Uh, he left me a note. So, um, a dear scumbag McFace Liarton the third. Classy. Uh, you're a conniving piece of shit. Okay, he actually swears a lot. So uh, you're you're a conniving piece of uh, 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 blank, and have ruined my entire uh, 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 blanking week. Uh, I've already missed like two shifts at Jamba Juice, which. I guess it's my own fault because I totally spaced and forgot to tell my manager I'd be out camping for five days. Uh, anyway, I'm going to find my way back to civilization on my own. And if you want to finish your stupid uh, 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 blanking documentary, you can use this stupid uh, 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 blanking camera you hate so much. Also, if you're wondering what happened to the map you said you didn't need, I set it on fire our first night out here. Because, uh, uh, uh blank you, pal. Um, and you smell like ham. Uh, that's not a compliment or an insult, you just smell like ham which is weird. Good luck with your stupid plan to impress your stupid son, who probably also uh, smells like ham. Yours in telling you to blank yourself uh, now and forever. Amen. Jimmy Mad Dog Hanson. It's basic three-act structure, you know, 101 shit. My internal story compass is telling me that we are about to enter the part of Act 2 known as the Dark Night of the Soul, uh, which is where your two characters, me and f***ing Wayne, uh, sort of undergo some kind of hardship. Uh, he is a huge piece of shit who lured me out into the woods and perpetuating a Bigfoot hoax and such, and I, his humble victim, got to bravely stand up to him by leaving the camp and f***ing up his map. We're gonna, we're gonna spend just enough time apart to learn our lessons, and then we're gonna come back together at the end of Act 2 and to confront whatever happens in Act 3. It's easy. Cut and print, check the gate, get us all out of here. So... <laughs> hungry. I'm going to wait like an hour, let him sweat for a little bit. Then I'm going to go back and uh, see Wayne because I, I need his help to get, get out of the woods. I, uh, I don't have a compass and I don't have a phone, which isn't stupid uh, because Christopher Nolan never had a phone and everything works out great for him. So get off my fucking back. I, <laughs> my plan my plan 
was to cut together all of the footage uh, and then use it to trace my steps and get out of the woods that way. But I can't do that because we're in the woods and all the trees look the fucking same. I am starting to see where Wayne's coming from a little bit though. You know, I mean, his life was ruined because of a story he had no control over. The story of Fart Dad. Now he's trying to build his life back up by telling a story of his own. Great Caesar's ghost. It's the Bigfoot. A really f***ing weird story, but he's telling it for his kid. You almost have to respect that. <sighs> Almost. Storytelling's hard, man. Like, I spent a thousand dollars that I won in a lucky ducky scratch off lottery ticket on my own education. You know, really pulled myself up by my bootstraps. And now I have a certificate of mastery in film and video production from Oklahoma City Community College. I got to hold a $15,000 red camera while my professor wasn't looking. I know my sh you know, and, and, and it's hard. It's still hard. And Wayne, he doesn't have any of that. He doesn't have my pedigree. He's just out here, you know, trying to make a Bigfoot movie because he loves his son. And that's the beauty of it. Some of us, like me, are trying to reach 5 billion Americans and ancillary foreign markets. Some of us are just trying to reach one person. I'd completely written Wayne off as, as crazy. But is he any crazier than the parents who tell their kids about the Tooth Fairy or, or the Easter Bunny? I mean, this world is hell. And it's, it's your job as a parent to try and keep that from your kid as long as you can. You know, you, you give them a little magic so they have to find out about the real world from somebody else. Wayne's son's magic died with Fart Dad. You know, he is he lost his hero. And all Wayne's trying to do is get a little of that magic back while there's still time. He wants to tell his kid a new story, his favorite story, even if it kills him. I guess I underestimated Wayne, which sucks really bad. Because <sighs> I almost definitely won't get to see him again to tell him that, you know, just because I'm, you know, going to die in the woods. I, uh, I'm just really, really fucking, I'm lost. I'm lost. I don't, I don't want to be out here. I like, I, uh, uh. Ah, these things are so dry! I hate this! Hey folks, Jimmy here. Remember I, uh, remember when I said that I, I might not be able to find Wayne or the campsite? Well, I was unable to find Wayne or the campsite, so now I'm just lost as all hell out here in the woods. No Wayne, no fire, no tent. And I'm realizing as I say this that I totally spaced on my uh, my sleeping bag. So I'm f***ed there too. Just really hope wherever Wayne is, he's doing better than me. Son, when they find my body, I need you to, uh, I need you to understand that uh, there's, there's more to this, like, I have my side of this divorce thing, too. Nope. Charlie, I'm sorry. I'm 
I'm sorry I failed as a dad. I failed you and myself. I'm so sorry. I just, I just wanted, I, uh, maybe it's good, maybe it's good that, um, that I'm out here so far, maybe it's good that they probably won't find my body, Charlie's been through enough, doesn't deserve doesn't deserve for everybody to know his old man starved to death in the middle of nowhere in a damn gorilla suit. I just wanted... I just wanted to prove that Bigfoot was real. Even if it was just for him. And I couldn't even do it. I couldn't even do that. <laughs> Keegan, if you're watching this, when we were kids, I stole your piggy bank and I took it to the coin star and I used the money from the coin star to buy like three boxes of Girl Scout cookies and then I brought them home and you asked for some and I told you that you couldn't have any of them because they were mine and I'm really sorry about that. Gam Gam, when I was in the eighth grade, I stole some of Grandpa's ashes and I put them in a little Ziploc bag and I sold them to Jake Robertson and I told him that it was cocaine and in exchange he gave me a bucket full of Chuck E. Cheese tickets and I used that bucket full of Chuck E. Cheese tickets to buy a little air hockey table that I got bored with immediately. And then a couple of months later I found out that Jake had to go to the hospital because he had bone fragments in his sinuses and I never got in trouble because he was afraid the cops would find out. Good, uh, good morning Vietnam. I don't, I don't feel good. Nothing ate me while I was asleep, which is good. That's sort of, that's the update. Uh, I didn't sleep though. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't relax after I heard that. That howl thing. I don't even know what it was. If it was a, like a, a wolf or a, a mountain lion or you know, whatever. But I was on guard for the rest of the night, even though I didn't hear another damn thing all night long. I did wake up with this waiting for me. It's uh, Bert and Randy's journal. I have no idea how the hell this got out here. But, uh, you know, what struck me about it was, was all this talk about dreams. And I, you know, I don't think, I, I, I don't feel like I got a lick of sleep last night, but. I had this, I don't know, this dream. By far, the wildest dream I ever experienced. I was following the Bigfoot around this abandoned house. And like the real Bigfoot, not some dipshit in a gorilla costume. It was Bigfoot. And, but I could only see the back of his head. I mean, I couldn't see his face at all. I was just kind of following him. He just walked around the house like he'd just woken up. Getting ready to, I don't know, go to work. He filed his claws, he brushed his fur. I guess even Bigfoot needs a full like self-care routine. Who knew? So the final part of the dream is what gets me. He walks into the bathroom. He needed to brush his teeth. He opened the medicine cabinet. Took out his toothbrush. Grabbed his toothpaste. And when he closed the medicine cabinet. I finally got to see his face in the reflection. And it was me. And it was Wayne. And then I opened my mouth. And with Jimmy's voice. I said. Get, get in, in there, there mother I mean, I guess I knew. That Wayne was technically handsome enough to be the man of someone's dreams. And I never <laughs> thought. <of> <laughs> Yeah, I helped you move that recliner. The perimeter, Brandy Mac. What perimeter? Austin! I'm coming for you, baby. Just hang on. All right.
right, you're gonna make sure I won't be identified, right? Yeah, 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 sure. Definitely. My face will still be on screen. Yes, I will also make that happen. Okay. I venture down into these here yonder woods because I got another call about teenagers humping each other or some such when Miss Brandy May here, who I must say, is one hell of a woman. Well, she came storming out of the woods alleging that she and her husband had been set upon by two good old boys she was able to identify as Bert and Randy Hayes on account of them both having separately attempted to buy her a bloomin' onion from the Australian-themed chain restaurant Outback Steakhouse as a form of courtship. Miss Brandy May here was able to escape her would-be abductors, but her husband Austin was not so lucky. So, I am now launching a search and rescue mission to save Austin and to ensure the swift hammer of righteous justice fall on his captors. Awesome. Uh, would you also mind helping me find my friend Wayne? I'm pretty sure he's lost out here. 10-4, citizen. Do you happen to have something of his? Uh, that'd make things go quicker. Uh, yeah. Uh, before I left yesterday, I stole his hat. I'm gonna make us a big mess of biscuits and gravy when I get you home, circuit bears. It's hang out. This way. I don't know what the fuck is even happening anymore. I'm having these weird Bigfoot dreams. I'm hearing shit in the woods. I don't even know if Jimmy's still alive. I'm not a religious man, but just give me a sign. Some kind of something, anything, some deliverance, some guardian angel. <laughs> oh. oh, thank you. Protect and serve. That's the job. Huh. Besides a proper law enforcement officer never ventures out into the forest without the three essentials, food, water, and pocket constitution. So did Bert and Randy say anything? You know, like about why they're trying to kidnap her in Austin? According to Miss Brandy May, they didn't say a word. She did describe them as having almost no emotion, uh, blank eyes, passionless, like sex with my ex-husband. <laughs> that was inappropriate. Um, uh, I assure you the rest of this operation will be conducted in a pro professional manner. <laughs> so. Gentlemen. This is weird, right? Well, those guys are lunatics, obviously, but Never thought of them as kidnappers. Yeah. Weird. No, not weird. It says in the journal that uh, Bigfoot can infiltrate your dreams. And if he does it for long enough, he can control your mind. Maybe Bert and Randy, you know, had it right. Maybe they're just victims. Maybe, maybe they're just doing Bigfoot's evil bidding or whatever. It also says in here that the only way to break the spell is to like know key phrases or say like a series of words that mean something to the victim. I hope that's not true. What do you think, Mr. Bigfoot? Mind control, key phrases? Sounds like a weekend hunt my in-laws house. You're so crazy, Mr. Bigfoot. So crazy. So, uh, uh, listen, I was stupid for ditching camp and leaving you behind and stuff. You know what? Why don't we just agree? We were both kind of assholes. Okay, yeah, that sounds great. Thanks, Dad. What? What? I said thanks. So that thing's just going nonstop? Uh, I think so. I don't know much about it. Jimmy set it up for me. Hmm. So what were you two doing out here in the first place? You and Austin? Uh, you know, just camping. Were you trying to kill him? What? No. If you're looking for somewhere to bury the body, I know all the places not to use. I wasn't going to kill my husband. I'm just saying, if you're taking applications for a new lover, I've got at least two solid references that could vouch for me. 
I love Austin with all my heart. I was just out here trying to make amends with him, not kill him. Amends? Yeah. Hmm. When he looked back on it, Austin just wasn't as comfortable as he thought sharing our bed with somebody else, even if it was Bigfoot. And well, it wasn't Bigfoot anyways, so we were just all lying to ourselves. So, wait, if it wasn't Bigfoot, were you two just the bear or something? No, it's a long story, but Austin has kept such an open mind since I've became more sexually adventurous. It was just one step too far. So we came out here to try to hit the reset button and I wanted to show him that no matter what happens, whether we open our marriage up again or not, he's the one I want to come home to every day. Are you sure you want that? Cause I can get you a third reference. It just won't be as positive as the other two. What in the world is that? In all my years out here, I've never seen anything like this. We better warn the boys. Uh, where'd they go? <laughs> Wayne! Camera boy! I'm telling you, man, they were right there, like, not even a minute ago. And then the second you started looking at those f***ing devil nets, they vanished. Uh, we don't we don't even know that's what this is. Right? Uh-huh. Made out of sticks and the bones of his enemies. Mm. Uh, what the fuck else are they going to be? Yeah, I can't do this. I can't do this. I'm done. Hey, wh what? Hey, whoa, 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 hey, whoa. What are you talking about? I just wanted to make a stupid movie, man. I didn't sign up for whatever this is. I absolutely not. You can't bail on this, dude. Austin's in trouble. Hip not my problem. Should have gone to Olive Garden. I'm done. What about your son? What about my son? Well, the whole reason you brought us out here was to prove to him the Bigfoot exists, right? And now that you actually start to see that proof, you're going to run away. Yeah, that doesn't prove anything. It proves you're a coward, man. There's an innocent man who needs our help. All right, so a, a teacher farted in your face and, and your little hoax didn't go the way you wanted it to. Who gives a shit? I'm out here trying to make a movie about some dipshit looking for Bigfoot and it won't be done, all right? It won't be perfect until we both nut up and do what we came here to do. So stop being a cowardly, half-assed son of a bitch and let your son see what he needs to fucking see. What is that, Jimmy? Exactly what is that? What is it that my son needs to he see? He needs to see you, Wayne. He needs to see that you're the dad he always thought you were. No more bullshit, Wayne. From either of us. So get in there, motherfucker. All right, no more bullshit. All right. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, baby. Wayne and Jimmy on the case, saving the day, finding Bigfoot, making our son proud. Ugh this dude you can have that little shit on weekends i don't care what how'd it get dark so fast this place doesn't play by the rules is that just you saying we're lost dude we've been lost for three days this is different eva lives here hey you seeing this yeah i see it Deputy Sheriff's pocket constitution. Nice. Oh, hell yeah. Brandy May had corn nuts on her. Mmm. Mmm. Bigfoot loves corn nuts. Come out, Jimmy. Alfalfa. No, but Wayne, remember? Bigfoot loves corn nuts. Shh. Austin! Oh, no! no! What the f Brandy May! Jesus. I heard Brandy May. Where'd she go? This this way, I think. Oh. Austin! Brandy May! Brandy May! Man who may or may not deserve Brandy May! Where are you? There's a light up here. Oh! Oh, is that fing dynamite? Perimeter! Y'all get out of here, it's a trap! Brandy May, is that you? Yeah, baby, it's me. I'm here. Oh, I set her safe for it so you knew it was me. I know, love. Just give me a second so I can keep our friends from blowing us up out here, all right? All right. Hey, Brandy, 
I'm sorry I ever doubted us. I love you. I love you too, Sugar Bear. Is that true, Randy? You gonna blow us all up? Insolent fools and wayward soul. You're all gathered here to reveal your true purpose. Okay, so uh, that's a real Bigfoot possession. Um, okay, nobody panic. Everybody just give me some key phrase that they might recognize. Snap them out of it. Uh, beer. Uh, boobs. Little house on the prairie. I love it. Keep them coming. These are good. NASCAR. Alternative facts. Uh, second cousins don't count. Silence. Your friends may live so long as you have what the mighty footed one seeks. What is that, Randy? Corn nuts, man. Are you f***ing serious right now? Wayne, Bigfoot loves corn nuts. Shut up, Jimmy. That can't be what this is. You two idiots get possessed. Brandy May and Austin get kidnapped. You try to blow the hell out of all of us. So that Bigfoot can get a Ziploc baggie full of corn nuts? Bigfoot loves corn nuts. Yep. Give me back, Jimmy. Oh, yeah, yep, yep, one bag coming up. Bigfoot wants corn nuts. Bigfoot can have corn nuts. Oh, God. Why wasn't the corn nut bag closed, Jimmy? Uh, I, I don't know. Man, I'm sorry, I totally spaced. You've insulted the Lord of the Forest by spoiling your sacrificial offerings. <laughs> okay, we need more key phrases. Let's go, let's go. Uh, yeehaw! Tractor! National Rifle Association! You're all arbiters of your own demise. Okay, Wayne, you gonna hurry with that? Uh, we'll all burn in the cleansing fire of your atonement. Uh, okay, okay, okay. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Well, hold on now. Did she, was that about to blow y'all up? Yeah, I think you were, man. Damn, I'm, I'm sorry. Bert. Front row. Oh, okay, uh, Bert, Randy, help me get these two free. Let's get the hell out of here. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> now that is how you establish a fucking perimeter. <laughs> Randy, what's the range on that switch? about the, a half football field at Junior Varsity. All right, we're gonna get the hell out of Dodge. I just need you to keep your finger on that switch. Got it. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are we gonna kill Bigfoot? We're gonna try like hell to kill Bigfoot. Hit this. Okay, that's, uh, that's enough. Let's go, everybody else. You've got them too, right? Yes, as long as I'm around, no harm shall befall you, citizen. Excellent. Someone say something about biscuits and gravy. Okay. Uh, uh, we gotta get Bigfoot on camera, man. Uh, we can't think about that right now. Let's go. We gotta go. Randy, keep your finger on that switch. Yeah, I got it. Ah, uh, no! What the f Jimmy? I gotta get Bigfoot. This movie won't be perfect without Bigfoot. Jesus Christ. Hey, uh, uh Randy, don't hit the, the, don't hit the switch. Hit the switch now? No, f no, don't hit the switch. <laughs> oh, God. <Whoa. laughs> Get up. We gotta go. All right, well, give me the camera. I'm not giving you the camera. Uh, not after that stunt, idiot. Everybody here? We all good? All safe and accounted for. Good. Get the hell out of here. Do you hear that? Oh All right, just give me a second here. Is my hair too sexy? Just the right amount. Mm, I'll say. So how are you folks doing? I mean, we're all right, you know? The, the experience out in the woods, it changed us forever. 
but for the better, I think. We're in rehab now. Yeah, no more cigarettes for us. Come on, honey. It was meth. Yeah, it, it was meth. Once we were able to call by its name, that's when we could recognize what kind of power it had over us. It's good shit, but it runs your life. And we decided to stick with monogamy, for now at least. No offense to you, of course. None taken. But if we ever do decide to open up our marriage just a jar, you're the first for call. I, I appreciate that. Just whatever you do, don't get rid of that gorilla suit. I'll do what I can. We're serious. Don't get rid of that suit. You like Bloom and Onion? I've hereby made the executive decision to disband the direct union to make Bigfoot absent swift and suddenly task force. Tell you the truth, uh, Bigfoot lives on one end of the woods and we live on the other, so our paths don't really cross anymore. Kind of live in a harmony situation now. But that doesn't mean that we've disregarded everything that Granddaddy Thaddeus has taught us through his scrapbook. It's his life's work. Hell, it's our life's work. Yep why we decided to start a new campaign to inform people about Bigfoot so they don't make the same mistakes that we did. It's called Folks Using Common Knowledge Against Bigfoot's Unusually Tenacious Telepathy Support Group. But did you learn anything? Uh, n no. No, Granddaddy Thaddeus did most of the heavy lifting with his, with his scrap, scrapbook. Bert, did you learn anything? Well, actually, after giving this experience its due consideration, I've realized that our family's multi-generational pursuit of Bigfoot and his or her or their forebears has been a xenophobic folly at its worst and a tragic comedy of errors at its best. You see, we've not even begun to scratch the surface to understanding the nature of Bigfoot's otherworldly powers, some might say magical powers. And given the lack of other empirical evidence, I've come to the conclusion that Bigfoot is ultimately unknowable. As of late, I've even pondered if Bigfoot has recognition of sovereign nations. And if that's the case, he couldn't possibly be out to subvert American values. It must therefore logically follow that though we may love and defend our beloved country of origin, the United States of America itself is not the center of the universe after all. Would you agree, Randy? Yep. Have you heard from Deputy Sheriff? No, after she got us all safely out of the woods, uh, I tried to thank her, but all she said was, protect and serve, that's the job. And then she ran back into the woods. I ain't seen her since. Damn hero, saved us all. Which was such a shock, you know, because we found out about her uh, other activities. A woman known only as Deputy Sharon allegedly infiltrated and then posed as an officer for the Lofa County Sheriff's Department for more than three months, according to authorities. During that time, she falsified multiple reports, noise complaints of teenagers throwing a party out in the woods. Authorities say that was part of her plot to hide her real agenda, to blow up the town of Lofa, collect the insurance money, and then start her own heroin empire. The details, and quite frankly, the whole logic behind the plot have authorities confounded. They are asking for the public's help to identify this dangerous and armed fugitive. If you have any information as to her whereabouts, please contact police right away. We now return to the swiftly canceled Fart Dad Comes Home, already in progress. Hey folks, Jimmy here, your director. Remember that thing I said about how a director's job is to weave truth into something perfect and give it to the audience? It's okay if you don't. I said it forever ago, uh, but it's also bullshit. Uh, a director's job is just to make something, period. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to get done. Well, this has been your director, Jimmy, signing off. Power off. Okay.
It just makes sense. It's work. I just need, I need this to be done. Hey, Gam Gam. Yeah, doing, doing great. Just working on the movie. Yeah, it, it, it takes, it's a, a lot of moving, a lot of moving parts. It takes a while. You will get to see it. Um, but I should let you know while I got you here, um, you are going to be pissed at me when you see it. 13's a big year, kid. Don't let it go to your head. Seventh grade, right? I liked seventh grade. Just stick to the pot. Maybe an Adderall before a big test if you can, but just if you can get your hands on it. Finish your homework, do your chores, and learn to change your own oil. If I ever, ever catch your punk ass in Jiffy Lube, I'll kick it myself. I'm just really proud of you, and I know you're going to continue growing into a fine young man. I love you, Charlie. Uh, hi, son. Uh, I guess I've been working on my super secret project for a long time at this point. I, I uh, didn't realize that a couple of weeks could turn into two years. Okay, be cool. Editing is where the movie comes together. This stuff takes time. It's fair. It's fair. Um, anyway, I, uh, one way or another, I, I don't know. I don't know. Have you talked to him yet? He's up next. All right, birthday boy, your turn in the hot seat. You having a good time? Nice, real strong, silent type, like the old man, love it. <clears throat> hey, uh, since we're talking about your dad, uh, have you had a chance to watch that gift he gave you? Yeah. Okay, and what did you think? It was okay, I guess. It was okay. You guessed. Dude, your dad made a whole movie just for you, and he's letting you see it before anyone else on the planet. He even made it about your favorite monster. I'm not a kid. I don't have a favorite monster. And if I did, it would not be Bigfoot. But, I don't know. Was any of it, like, real? Yeah. Yeah, all of it was real, man. I was with your dad the whole time, and it's all true. Then that's pretty cool. Really cool, I guess. Oh, dude, we did it. Wayne and Jimmy at it again, kicking ass, taking names, making our son proud of us. Of uh, your, your son proud of you, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, but words out about our movie. About how we claim to have footage of a real Bigfoot. Okay. Just got off the phone with the mayor of a small town in Mexico. Apparently, they've found a creature that can only be described as El Chupacabra, the goat sucker. The terror of farmers and livestock across North America for centuries. My name is Wayne Nicholson, and I'm a plumber from Duran, Oklahoma. I ask you now to journey with me as we face down our own fears, transcend our expectations of the ordinary, as we search for the mysterious, the strange, the inexplicable, the elusive. Join me, won't you?